This church is going to be a soul winning church. If I have to do it by myself, it's going to be a soul winning church. But it's obvious from today that I don't have to do it by myself. We had 122 people saved this weekend. Man, praise the Lord. Amen. What a blessing. And, and, and I'm glad to see visitors coming in from people that heard the Gospel today. And we're getting calls to people that are interested. And praise the Lord that Jacksonville, Florida now has a soul winning church. Amen. This is part of our vision. Our primary goal, in fact, is to preach the Gospel. Amen. And I want to do everything in my power to help you learn how to be a better preacher. How to be a better soul winner. I want to use what God's given me and I want to give it to you. In Luke chapter 19, look at verse number 5. It says, And when Jesus came to the place, He looked up and saw Him and said unto Him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Now this is like the soul winner's call. He's saying, hurry up! Get down here! Come on! you got to get saved. You know, it just happened yesterday. These two young guys were running by and they didn't want to stop. They didn't want to listen. They wanted to scoff. And I, I got in their face. Get, get over here. Come on. Come, come here. I started talking. I drew, I drew them in. The Bible says we should persuade people. Amen, right. I had a free gift these guys couldn't pass up. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. They believed the truth when they heard it. One was honest enough to say, I know I'm going to hell. I'm not ready to make that commitment. But thank God they heard the gospel. We were sent out to win souls. And we did it. And it's because Amen. that's what Jesus did. That's what we're going to see here. The pattern is... Jesus did it, and so should we. Amen. Look at verse 6, and it says, And he made haste, and came down, and received him joyfully. That's what happened. These two kids that got saved, they were smiling, they were laughing, they just made you're a funny guy, you know? I used whatever, whatever I could, even if it were bad jokes, just to get this guy. I don't mean dirty jokes, I mean poorly, poorly laid out jokes, whatever, right? But it says that they received them joyfully. And you know, in John 1, 12, it says, To them gave, the, gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Those that received Jesus became sons of God. Amen. When you receive it, this is what happened right here to Zacchaeus. He received him joyfully. Amen. Hey, I want to be saved. Hey, I want to know the truth. There are people all over this city that want to know the truth. Right. They think they're a Christian, but they're not sure they're going to heaven. And that in itself is very contradictory, but the churches that they've gone to, they're not, tell, they're not waking them up. They're not preaching the Gospel. And when somebody knocks on their door and says, do you want to know for sure? With zeal, many people will say, yes, I want to know. Amen. I really do. I want, to, I want to get this settled. And I can't tell you how many times over the past several years I've had people say, this, blows my, this is so... I was just saying last night, I was just praying this the past week that, that I could figure this out. Is that random? No. It's of God. It's a divine appointment. And this church is going to send out soul winners every week as long as it exists. Amen. Look at the next verse. In verse 7 it says, And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that He was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Now in Romans 5.8 it says, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And this is the scoffers. Oh, you're going to hang out with sinners? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'd rather hang out with sinners that just got saved Amen. than people that have been in churches their whole life and they're dead as a doornail. They, have, they do not have the Spirit of God on their life. There's no blessing on their life because they're not living it. I would rather hang out with sinners. Yes, I would. Amen. You know, there was a guy yesterday I spoke to. His name was Joseph. And this young man knew the Bible. This young man was wrong, though, in that he said, well, I have to repent of my sins. I have to live a good life. And I, 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 I broke it down. I tried to simplify it for him about what gets saved. Is it your spirit and your soul? Or is it your body? Well, of course. It's, it's your soul that gets saved. Amen. But stopping sin, isn't that in your body? It was like I hit him in the head with a hammer. <laughs> yeah? So do you have to stop sinning to be saved? And he did not want to hear the Bible. He didn't want me to open the Bible. He kept saying, I got to go, I got to go. He changed his mind on this point. He admitted he was wrong in that he's thinking it's in the flesh he has to do works to get saved, but he still refused to hear the Gospel. And it's sad. There's a lot of people that are tied up. Oh, you're a sinner, obviously. And you know, not to pick on it, but you could smell the weed coming out of his house. Hey, praise the Lord, weed smokers can go to heaven. Praise the Lord, drunkards can go to heaven. Even murderers can go to heaven if they understand the truth of the Gospel. And it's, it's a glorious thing, but this guy was stuck on that. Look at, look at the verse 8. It says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give unto the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. In verse 9 it says, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come unto this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. 
So he's saying, hey, this guy is saved. He received it gladly. He believed the gospel. Zacchaeus got saved. You know, and it says now he's a son of Abraham. Hey, faithful father Abraham. It says in Galatians 3, if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed Amen. and heirs according to the promise. Amen. That promise was of the gift of righteousness. That promise was of everlasting life. Amen. Look at verse 10. It says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to seek and to save. We are sending out to seek and to save. This is our job. This should be a full-time job. We should take soul winning seriously. It is the primary goal of this church. I want to say it again. Soul winning is the primary goal of this church. It's good to fellowship. It's good to grow. It's important to listen to preaching. But if you're not soul winning, you're not acting like Jesus Christ. You're not acting like a Christian ought to act. In verse 11 it says, And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh unto Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should appear immediately. And he said, Therefore a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until I come. Occupy until until I come. Now you know the rest of the, the parable here that, that we are given gifts. Go ahead and turn to Proverbs 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Could somebody get me a bottle of water please? We are given certain gifts and Jesus is telling us that our occupation, when it says occupy, that's not talking about that political movement where you go sit on somebody else's lawn and don't do anything, okay? Your occupation ought to be, thanks Rob, ought to be that of a soul winner. Your occupation, you've been commanded by Jesus Christ to go out and win the lost to tell them that your, their sins have been forgiven if only they would believe it. In John 20, he says, Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Jesus was given power through the Holy Spirit. And now that you're saved, you've been given gifts and talents by God. And if you don't use them, you will have to answer for it. Right. 